Good evening, I'm Laurie Johnson. Welcome to Houston Public Media's web series, Political Perspectives. Every week I'll be joined by show commentators Jay Iyer and Brandon Roddinghouse to discuss all things political. Tonight we'll continue the conversation from Red, White and Blue with Senator Rodney Ellis. So let's get started, Jay and Brandon. Uh, first of all, we want to talk mainly about the fact that Senator Ellis is running for the Harris County Commissioner's Court. He is trying to get the Democratic nomination for Precinct 1. We've already heard from Gene Locke, who is currently serving in that role and is also trying to get that nomination. So, uh, you know, kind of what's what's the tension going on there in that race right now? <laughs> so the mechanics of that campaign are, are, are really unusual. Um, this is not a Democratic primary. It's not a special election. What it is is an appointment process with 130 or so precinct judges, Democratic precinct judges only, that will select uh, who the Democratic nominee will be, and that person will then uh, be on the ballot this November, and because they're running unopposed, will be uh, the commissioner. Um, and so that's really what the race is about, is about a, a constituency of 130 Democratic activists, uh, Democratic precinct judges, um, and they have a choice between uh, Gene Locke, who's appointed, and, um, and, 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 and long-term served, long-time serving uh, State Senator Rodney Ellis, who in full disclosure, uh, is uh, it was my former boss many moons ago, and I got my start in uh, in politics and policy uh, and the study of it from from him. So uh, this is a rare case where he's actually running for re-election as a state senator, uh, but he's also announced that he wants to be the precinct one commissioner. If they pick him as the nominee then he is, in effect, going to be the Harris County Commissioner and he will drop off the ballot as state senator. Do I have that right? Because it's a little confusing. Yeah, he, he will, and then he'll be replaced by basically the same cohort oh. that would put him onto the County Commissioner's Court, as it were, if that happened. These are, as Jay said, what we used to call yellow dog Democrats, <laughs> right? Democrats who would rather vote for a yellow dog than a Republican, so <laughs> the most blue of the blue. And that's, I think, a good constituency for him. He's been in the legislature for so long and has carried so many bills that have been so impactful for Texas and for his constituency that I think is puts him in pretty good stead. The fact that he has been so prolific as a legislator is a, of tremendous value to him, not only in terms of the relationships he's got, but also in terms of thinking about how to manage this whole process. But there's a downside, and the downside is that you're losing a tremendous amount of legislative experience, not just from him, but if you bundle this with Sylvester Turner leaving the legislature and you add in uh, Trey Martinez Fisher leaving and potentially a few others, your Democrats are down some 60 plus years of legislative experience and some people who have done a lot of the necessary kind of limitations in trying to hold the line against some of the Republican uh, uh, process. So that is, I think, a worry for the party, not only for the next legislative session, but also thinking th about the big picture, about where the bench will come from and where are you gonna have the next generation of legislative and political leaders in the Democratic Party. So this is, I think, a kind of a bittersweet moment for them. So the, well, one of the interesting things about Senator Ellis is he is a staunch Democrat, and yet he has passed an enormous amount of legislation in his, what almost three decades, I think, right. in, in the state legislature, including a lot of bills that I think the general public would be aware of, things like the state sales tax holiday. That's that's his baby. He, right. he came up with that. Um, uh, a lot of criminal justice reform issues, a public defender's office for Harris County. Mm -hmm. These are things where he had to kind of work across the aisles uh, mm -hmm. to get these things done. So as you say, mm -hmm. you're sort of losing a, a significant asset in, in the Democratic Party at the state level. Right, I mean, it's not just at the Democratic Party level. It's, it's really at the Houston level. I mean, what, you're, what you've got now is we've lost, we're about to lose, or, or rather, we potentially could lose the state senator in, in Rodney Ellis. We've lost uh, the senior house member in, in, in Sylvester Turner, um, arguably, maybe the two of the most prominent members among the Democratic elected officials, but the two great uh, protectors of Houston, right, to lack of a better word, right, whether it's the, at the university level, taking, making sure that funding for the University of Houston and Texas Southern University and, and, and HCC and other entities were, were taken care of, issues related to, to just education and criminal justice reform and the funding uh, Sylvester Turner is part of the reason CHIP got reinstated, fully funded again. Senator Ellis is the reason we have, as you said, the sales tax holiday. So you're losing a tremendous amount of institutional experience. And part of the qu next question is, is who's going to fill that void? You've got a cadre of younger, newer uh, members that are going to be coming in. Um, but what makes these two special 
um, is their ability to be both progressive and work with conservative and Republican members. And that's a unique skill that, that I think takes time to develop. Now for Senator Ellis, you, um, if he gets on commissioner's court, he'll use those same skills to, to help the community and work with a Republican dominated commissioner's court. And we're seeing some of that at least in the mayor's office already with the success Sylvester Turner has had in, uh, in terms of bringing folks together. So what, why would Senator Ellis want to leave the state legislature and go to Harris County? What's the appeal with being on the commissioner's court? Yeah, I think like Jay said, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of good work that can be done. And to be honest, a lot of the work is this ground level work. This is Harris County work. This is dealing with issues like mental health, dealing with issues like crime. This isn't a criminal justice agenda. This is criminal justice. And there's a difference between those two things. You throw on the fact that you've got the potential to be able to help the city overcome problems of flooding like we've seen the last couple of weeks and the, just a myriad of things that the county can do to help the citizens of the county, but also to work with the city it's a good choice. You want somebody, you need somebody who's going to be able to do the work of working within the council. And you've got diverges there in terms of the politics. And so you need to have somebody who knows how to reach across the aisle. But you also have somebody who can deal with both government above and below you, right? So city, you know, down and you've got to go up to state. So somebody who is able to negotiate across this is going to be important. So the job is really, I think, one of those jobs where in some ways, although it's, you know, rank them as such, but you've got a lot more potential there. So the kind of thing that are have to, gonna have to get done, like, I'll just throw out it again, the Astrodome, right, has gotta get done. Uh, these kinds of things, you gotta have somebody who thinks about the big picture, and so that's partly why I think one would go from, there was a natural transition from thinking about where you are in the state Senate and thinking about the good of your district, but also Texas, to thinking about Harris County at the micro level, but also kind of at the macro level. So the interesting thing about Harris County Commissioner's Court is it's a very small governing body for a massive populated yeah. area. You've yeah. got four precincts, and then a Harris County judge presiding. So five people all together voting for an enormous land mass, millions and millions of dollars of tax money yeah. coming in, and hardly anybody knows what they do or what's going on. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of attention gets paid yeah. to Harris County. Would Senator Ellis be a sort of a shakeup in that model? Oh, I think absolutely. I mean, you, as you said, I mean, there's there's four people, four commissioners that effectively run the the administrative part of uh, of the county with it with a presiding judge. 75% of, of, of the, the city of Houston or, 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 or fits into precinct one, the precinct that he's trying to get into. Um, and so that element kind of comes into play. But, but yeah, I mean, I think it would, he's his, any state elected official, a state senator or state, state house member is used to a certain level of transparency and that's a big part of it. Commissioner's court has thrived on basically being kind of this closed shop. Uh, you don't really know what's going on there. Um, the majority of the population now lives in outside the city limits in, of Harris County. They live in the unincorporated area. And so that, um, uh, the idea of having someone come in that wants to uh, sort of publicize what's being done is a, a disruption to the status quo. Um, it's, it's funny to think of Senator Ellis as someone who's had this long career in public service as a change agent, but I think in the world of Harris County government, he most definitely would be. Uh, bringing in far more attention than they than they probably like or are used to, and so in that sense, I think you're definitely looking at him as as potentially shaking the way uh, the court has functioned. We see these pro we've seen problems that have emerged that require big vision, and that's not to say that be, uh, we, we we don't have it, but. Having some new voices is probably a good idea, right? Criminal justice issues are, mm -hmm. are, na are national issues, mental health issues, statewide for sure, but also national. Flooding issues, regional, but this is also something that impacts the whole state. So somebody who thinks about the big picture here and who has this kind of vision is really important. So I think that in that way, you've got somebody who can find that and the person who fills that seat's gotta be able to make sure that they think about that big picture and think big because you've got the money and all you need is to think about how to uh, execute that vision. Do either of you want to make any predictions for who we'll see on the ballot for Precinct 1? <laughs> yeah, I will. And I mean, I, I, I'm sure maybe Brandon wants, wants to chime in on this as well. But I, I, I would be surprised if Senator Ellis um, wasn't on there. Uh, I mean, he's, because of the nature of the way we're, we're selecting him, it's, these are the most staunch Democrats. He's been a Democratic office holder. He, many of the same folks are folks that he's sort of served in that capacity. Um, Gene Locke, Commissioner Locke is a, is I think a, a, a great, has proven to be a really good public servant, a great public servant. 
but he's never been a partisan public servant. And, and the reality is, um, I mean, he's by nature of this process, it really skews heavily in favor of someone who's been there on the front lines at the grassroots level, at the Democratic level, and that really is Senator Ellis. He's probably uniquely set up to, to, to take this, um, particularly against someone who's, who really doesn't have that background. Do you agree? I think that's right. Um, I'd give Lock a Puncher's chance, though. I mean, he's been good at getting the kind of ground level work, and he's been active in trying to funnel money to places where that would be helpful. So I think that he probably is in a position to have some of that. And it could be the case, frankly, that there are people who don't want that kind of energy on commissioner's court. They view the job as being somebody who, you know, takes money from pot A and puts it to project B. And so there could be a kind of backlash about that. And so if that's the case and you do see some ripple there, I think it could be a problem. But I suspect that Jay's exactly right that you're talking about the electorate here, which is very, very yeah. liberal, and they're looking for somebody to match. All right, well, thank you so much for your thank insight. You. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching the program. Remember to log on to HoustonPublicMedia.org slash perspectives every Friday night at 8 p.m. following the 7.30 broadcast of Red, White, and Blue. Thanks so much for watching. See you again next week.